Python in Excel broke the internet last year when Microsoft announced that we could now write Python code within our workbooks. This opens up a whole new world of possibilities for calculating, analyzing, and visualizing data within our workbook. In this video, we'll break down everything you need to know about Python in Excel and show you a bonus tip at the end that you don't want to miss. Let's get started. Here we have sales data in Excel that we need to analyze. Let's take a look at how we can use Python and Excel to analyze it and see how it differs from using Excel's native tools. To activate Python in Excel, all you have to do is type equals PY, hit tab, and now we have the ability to write Python code in the formula bar to perform tasks. How cool is that? Before we get too ahead of ourselves and start coding away, we need to store this data as a Python data frame so that Python can read it when we reference it in our code. To create a Python data frame, we'll select the cell that we want to store the data frame in, activate Python by typing equals PY open parenthesis, and now we need to enter a name for our data frame so that we can reference it by name in our code. I'm going to go ahead and call it DF and then just set the name equal to the data range by typing an equal sign and selecting the data. Once all of the data is selected, press Control Enter to create the data frame. When working in the Python editor, you'll always need to press Control Enter to enter your Python code because the enter key starts a new line of code. One other important thing to note is that our data frame is currently stored as a Python object within this cell. So if you want to view the values the Python object contains, you'll need to update the output to an Excel value by opening the Python output dropdown next to the Python editor, selecting Excel value, and now we can view our data. In this case, we are working with the Python data frame, so let's switch this back to a Python object. Okay, now for the fun part, writing Python code. Python has a ton of great methods, functions, and data visualization tools that we can quickly apply to our data thanks to Python and Excel. For example, let's say we want to use Python to quickly learn about our data. All we have to do is activate the Python editor by typing equals PY, then pressing tab, selecting our data frame in cell I2, and then applying Python's describe function to our data by typing dot describe with an open and close parenthesis. Let's go ahead and press control enter to enter our code and see what Python comes back with. Before we panic and assume that this didn't work, remember Python returns Python objects. So in order to view the results, we need to switch the output to an Excel value by opening the Python output dropdown and selecting Excel value. Now we can see all of our stats Python just calculated for us in seconds. We have average sales, average units, the min and max value for each attribute, standard deviation, and so on. Another way of entering this Python code is instead of selecting the data frame in cell I2 and then typing dot describe, we can simply type the name that we set our data frame equal to. So in this example, we could type df because we named our data frame df in the previous code, dot describe, and we would get the exact same results. Now let's say we were really hoping to learn more about the item column, but we don't see it listed in Python's results. Not a problem, we can easily reference columns within a data frame by typing dot and then the column name after we reference the data in our code. So for example, in this case we would enter dot item in our code after df and then press control enter to apply the describe function to the item column. When writing Python code, it is really important to note that everything is case sensitive. So make sure that you are capitalizing letters that are capitalized in your data. Also, Python does not do well with reading spaces, so I would avoid including spaces in your headers if you can. Python is also great for quickly summarizing data, similarly to the same way we would with a pivot table. So for example, let's say we want to summarize sales by item. All we would have to do is activate Python, enter our data frame by typing df, and now we can use Python's group by function to summarize our data. So I'm going to go ahead and type dot group by followed by an open parenthesis. And now we need to enter the field that we are summarizing by in double quotes. We are summarizing sales by item 
So I'm going to enter item in double quotes and then enter a close parenthesis. Next, we need to enter the field we are summarizing. So I'm going to type dot sales. And lastly, we need to enter how we want to summarize our data. So I'm going to type dot sum with an open and close parenthesis. Now that our Python code is complete, we can press control enter to summarize our data. Remember, Python returns Python objects, so don't be alarmed when the word series is returned. To view the data series, switch the result from a Python object to an Excel value. And now we have our summary table. You can also easily update the code if you want. So let's say we want to see sales by year instead of item. All we would have to do is replace the word item with year in the code. And now we have sales by year. Now let's say we want to get fancy and see this data in a line chart. Lucky for us, Python has a ton of great data visualization tools we can quickly apply to our data. So for example, to visualize this data table, all we would have to do is go back into the Python editor and type dot plot at the end of our code to tell Python to plot these values in a chart. Next, we can tell Python which type of chart to use by entering the chart type within the plot function. In this example, we want to create a line chart, so we would enter kind equals line in double quotations inside the function's parentheses. Once we've told Python which chart to use, all we have to do is press Control Enter, and we now have a line chart. It's hard to see right now because the chart is inside this tiny cell, so let's merge this cell with a couple other cells to make the chart bigger. Much better. As always, we can easily update this code if we need to, so if we wanted to see how this data looked in a bar chart, all we have to do is replace the word line with bar in our code, and now we have a bar chart. If you are new to Python and still are feeling very overwhelmed on how to use Python to analyze data in Excel, just lean on AI to help. ChatGPT is a great resource to use if you want to know if you're able to use Python to accomplish a task, how to write Python code to accomplish a task, help troubleshoot your Python code, etc. For example, let's say we want to create a scatterplot visualizing sales by units ordered using Python but we have no idea how to do this. Not a problem, we can just open up ChatGPT in our browser and describe what we want to do using Python as the prompt. I'm going to enter write Python code that creates a scatter plot that visualizes sales by units and see what it comes back with. Within seconds, ChatGPT wrote this Python code to create exactly what we were looking for. And now all we have to do is copy the code into Excel. When writing Python code in Excel, we don't have to import libraries and we already created our data frame. So I'm going to skip over those lines of code and only copy the create the scatter plot and add labels and title sections. Once we've copied the code, navigate back to Excel, activate Python, and paste the code into the Python editor. Before we enter the code, we need to double check and make sure that ChatGPT's code references the data in our workbook by checking to see if the names of the data frame and columns match our data. For example, ChatGPT called this data frame DF, which matches ours, so we are good to go there. And the sales and unit column names exactly match our data headers. Perfect. If the data referenced in ChatGPT's code does not match the name of the data frame you created, all you would have to do is swap out each instance within the code with the name of your data frame. Once we've made sure that the code is referencing our data, press Control Enter, update the output to an Excel value, merge the chart with surrounding cells to make the chart more visible. And just like that, we've created a scatter plot using Python and Excel without knowing how to write this code. AI truly makes anything possible when it comes to Python and Excel, even if you've never used it before. Python and Excel may feel overwhelming and hard to access, but don't worry, ChatGPT and I are here to help. To learn how to leverage AI to master Python and Excel, along with VBA, Excel formulas, and more, check out my new AI for Excel course linked below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more.